When you think of South Africa, what is the first thing that comes to mind? What's up everyone and welcome to Unfiltered. This is a project that I'm going to be working on for a while and this is the very first episode. The reason it's called Unfiltered is because I will be covering topics that generally get filtered out of mainstream media. For this video, our focus is on a dam in the middle of a township called Danoon. The township was formed around the 1990s and while I was there I talked to a few people and they say that the dam hasn't been cleaned since the formation of the township and it's not hard to believe. It's extremely dirty. It's, it's almost undescribably dirty. So what did we do? <laughs> we went canoeing through it. And uh, the reason I wanted to do that was because I wanted to get striking images. It's anyone can go and photograph litter, but I really wanted to explore that area from the inside. And that's exactly what we did. couldn't find a canoe so on our first day of filming I took a paddleboard but it was extremely unstable and I couldn't get the kind of shots I needed so we decided to call it a day but on our way home we drove past a fire that had just started in the township so we decided to stop and document it. When I got home, I started looking for a canoe. The only problem was I didn't have much money to spend and canoes are a lot more expensive than I thought they were. But eventually, I found something for the right price. The canoe was in really bad shape and it had a few holes in it. But after a little bit of work, my dad and I managed to patch them all up. Once that was done, Caroline and I decided to test out the canoe in the pool and this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> push, push, push. Okay. Now hop in at the front here. No! <laughs> you got a white wall just. Ow! Sorry. Ah! It's hot! This is funny for me. Sit, sit, sit! How can I sit up when this thing is going? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Quick! Let's take another look at that, but from a different angle. <laughs> 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 
Caroline doesn't know how to swim and that was her first time inside of a swimming pool. So she got really scared, but I think she handled it like a champ. And after that very successful test run, I think we were ready for the real thing. You like my boat? Okay. My ear. They like you, man. <laughs> they like teasing me. <laughs> you think it will fit through yet? Oh. There's car coming. Very careful. It's recording. I think there's a little hair here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, should we go? I'm not gonna follow you that side. I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna step on. Big ears, big ears. Yes, I got big ears. <laughs> no matter where I go, people tease me about my ears. <laughs> he didn't. He, he, he just said them. He this didn't create a soft jaw. One ears, big. One ears, small. One ears. <laughs> The main theme in this video has been waste disposal and pollution, specifically plastic pollution. So today I sat down with Robbie Lockie, who is one of the co-founders of Plant Based News, to talk about this problem and find out what we can do about it. The dam in this video is a very small scale example of a much greater problem. How does that statement make you feel? It's an interesting statement that the dam is, in fact, a microcosm of a, of a macrocosm. What you see in that dam is a true reflection of actually what's happening out in the world. There is a tsunami of plastic that is covering the ocean. We produce, for example, 20,000 plastic bottles every second. That's over a million bottles are produced every single minute on Earth every single day. We, we're going to soon be calling it planet plastic, not planet Earth. What can we as individuals do about this problem? I think we can do a number of things. Obviously, there's the removing plastic from our homes and trying to use and reuse things, upcycle, rather than throwing all those plastic containers out, reuse them, use them to cook and make things with. Plastic lasts for 4,000 years. So, you know, you can get a lot more use out of it. <laughs> you can melt it down, you can turn it into objects, you can do all kinds of great stuff with it. But we should also be putting pressure on corporations and governments to uh, push legislation to make it harder for corporations and companies to continue to produce more and more virgin plastic when we need to go into the environment and reclaim the plastic that's there and reuse it. How do you bring people together to fight for a common goal? Bringing people together can be done in a number of ways. Um, I really think that the power of art and documentary and filmmaking and, and culture is a great way to do that. Um, I think that, you know, the internet and social media has given us a tool to mass mobilize millions of people around important issues that we care about. And I think sometimes as individuals, we think, um, you know, we're, I'm just one person. What, what can I do? Um, you know, I'm just one person. What can I do? Said 7.8 billion people. You know, if we're all saying the same thing, we're all paralyzed by an action. But I think that there are so many organizations out there that you can join. If you're not interested in creating your own organization, there are organizations out there that are fighting plastic um, and plastic pollution and creating and working on solutions. So go and join an organization, go and volunteer in an organization. And um, yeah, you, you, your time will be well spent. 
And if people want to find you on social media, where, where can they look? Um, you can find us on all social media, and I mean all social media, uh, under the handle Plant Based News. Uh, yeah, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, pod, uh, podcast, and SoundCloud, etc. You're on the more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Recently, I've been on a break from my documentary work, but it feels so good to be back, and I can't wait to see where this project takes me. I hope you'll be joining me for the ride that is unfiltered. <laughs> With that being said, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you when you see me.